Wisconsin Foodie would like to thank the following underwriters for their support. Going on. Hey, bud. Hey, guy. We're uh, cutting up some pork belly. Gonna make some uh, duck sausage today. We have some uh, local duck okay. and local pork belly here. Nice. Now, why a combination of duck and pork? The duck by itself, it could make the sausage. Okay. But what you're gonna run into is you're gonna end up with a little bit more of a dry sausage. Okay. Um, so we add the pork belly, uh, in this case, simply to add fat. Sure. This is four pounds of duck to one pound of pork sauces or pork belly. And to put a Wisconsin spin on it, we're gonna add the cranberries. Where are the cranberries from? Honestly, cranberry. They're going to exhibit the tartness of the cranberry without any sweetener. Wow. You wow. have the tartness, you have the salt, the pepper, the garlic, but no sweetener. Okay, cool. What do we gotta do now? Yep. We, gotta, we gotta grind it? We're gonna grind it and then we'll mix up the spices. So we have some salt, some pepper, chopped garlic. It's all ground up, you've got the spices, you've got the garlic, you've got a little bit of nutmeg. Are we now gonna we, mix it? Now we get dirty. Yeah. yeah, go. So, now, let's add some cranberries. Sweet. You know what I'm gonna do? Let's yeah. go for broke here. Okay. All right, there okay. it is. Uh, so we're gonna take the duck and pork and sausage mixture, we're gonna put it in the chamber to stuff it here. Okay, cool, awesome. Um, what you wanna do here is drop it in. Okay, why drop it? Drop it because you're gonna wanna pound any air that's in there out. Sweet. Uh, you'll see when we're stuffing it out of the tube, if air is in the pockets, uh, if air, air is in here, it'll get into the sausage casing, which could end up in exploding your casing. Okay, yeah. An explosion meaning just popping it open. So we have that, we have that stuffed. Yep, stuffed, you're locked and loaded. We've got our casing. This is, this is natural casing. This correct? is natural casing, Okay, yes. sure. Crank this down. Oh, I see it, I see it. Okay. So once all the air is pushed out, I'm gonna stop it off. We're gonna get to about a brat size. Now when you say a brat size in Wisconsin, I think most of us know how, how big that is approximately. So that's about eight inches long. Okay. Right there. Mm -hmm. now I'm gonna pinch it off, pinch it off here, and do some twists. Okay. Now we're twisted off and we have our first sausage link. Cool. Now you're gonna keep gumming. And you definitely don't have to twist every time. You can make a coil sausage. Sure. Um, we've definitely done that here. Mm -hmm. um, but personally, I like the art of this is my sausage. Here we go, we have one, two, three, about 15 links. At this point, we can hang these up and dry them a little bit. Sure. And what that does is, is set the casing okay. around the meat a little bit, or we can cut them apart and eat them right away. Okay, cool. Well, I think what I want to do with these is I, I would like to poach them if I can. Yep. And I want to capture as much of this flavor as possible. Cool. And uh, look at that. That's work wags. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're back in the kitchen. And we have with us these amazing sausages that Ryan put together downstairs. But what I want to start with first is, is something that's a little bit more simplified. Uh, there's a tradition of making gnocchi in, in the Italian culture. And gnocchi can be actually really fussy and temperamental. So at the cafe, we love to do this little dish that we call nudi. And it's, it's a deviation of gnocchi. So we're going to start by taking our goat cheese and adding it to our mixer. So this is Montrachet goat cheese. It comes from Belmont, Wisconsin. Fun fact is that Belmont, and this is how I get my servers to remember it, is the first state capital of Wisconsin. We're gonna do six eggs. Next we have some flour from Metal Arc Organics. We're gonna lightly knock this in. I'm gonna add just a dash of salt and a little pepper. And I'm gonna turn this thing on and start to mix at low speed. So we can see that start to come together a little bit. What's really nice about this is the farm fresh eggs really give that like a sunshiny yellow color, which I think is beautiful. And it's always symbolic of a really, really good pasta dough. What I see though in this bowl right now is we have a really, really nice consistency for that dough. I'm gonna take and work this dough right onto this flour. Now this feels amazing. It's soft, it's supple. I'm gonna take and roll this out just a little bit. Now 
Like any good pasta or nudie or gnocchi, it has that consistency of like almost a pasta marshmallow. So the next step in this process is gonna be blanching them in salted boiling water. When they start to float, we're gonna give it about a minute or two so we can let that mixture of the goat cheese and the egg set. And then we're gonna scoop them into the ice cold water. The cool part about this, the floating is really, really essential because when we drop them into the ice shock, initially, they are gonna sit on top. As they cool down though, we'll start to see them fall and sink. And that's that air leaving and those cells setting, which makes a little bit more firm or nudie. And you can see right now, they're starting to go to the bottom of the leg. So we can pull it out and we can see that there's a really firm texture to this. That really light, fluffy cloud has got this nice encapsulation there. We can feel that it's firm and squish it. I like to taste it too. And the beautiful part about this particular pasta is you get a lot of the tartness with the Montrachet goat cheese and the subtleness of the salt and black pepper and the richness of the egg. And I think that that is amazing. What we wanna do next is we wanna reduce the heat just a touch on that boiling liquid. I wanna season this though and poach these sausages. So I'm gonna take an onion, a few sprigs of parsley, just a little bit of chili flake to the water and our garlic. At this juncture, we want this to be just around a boil. So about 205 to 210 degrees. We're gonna grab the sausages that Wags made down in the basement. And we're gonna take and put four of them in that poaching liquid. Uh, we have our, our sausages poaching in the back. We've got our nudie chilling in the bottom of the, of the shock. And I'm gonna turn on a burner to about a medium high heat. What I wanna do at this point is take the nudie out of the bottom of the, of the shock. We're gonna add just a little bit of high temperature cooking oil, and then I'm gonna come back with one of my favorite ingredients, the Westby Co-op Creamery Butter. We're going to take and add our nudie. I wanna make sure that I get these shiitake mushrooms in because they're gonna need just a little bit of time to cook with it. And they're really gonna soak up that brown butter flavor. We're gonna add our onion. And next we're gonna take the pride of Cranmore, Wisconsin, cranberries. One of the last steps that I wanna do with this dish is add just a little bit of bulk and green to it. And I think for me, there's nothing that adds that flavor and bulk like a little bit of kale. We've been poaching these sausages for about five minutes and now I wanna put a little bit of color on them. So I'm gonna lay those carefully in this saute pan. It's time for one of my favorite parts in the process. And that's hitting this with just a little bit of wine. In this case, we're gonna use a little bit of a rosé, a sparkling rosé to offset that cranberry flavor. and give it a little bit of love. And this is really gonna even out and mellow all those flavors together and create a really nice base. And you can see that wine and that butter kind of work together to create its own sauce. All the flavors have kind of come together. All right. The smell of this dish is, uh, it's really different. You obviously get a little bit of the acidity that you can smell in the cranberry which I think is awesome. But then the big uniter and the thing that smooths out all the rough edges in a dish like this is the butter. We're ready for the sausages. And we wanna take and cut them on a hard bias. And you can see, look at the moisture in there. And those fat pieces are still whole and solid. We have the cranberry sitting right in the top. Next, we're gonna hit this with a little Marike Gouda. I'm a big fan of fresh herbs at the very end of our pasta dishes, just to give it a little bit of fresh kick. And some fresh parsley really kind of helps round it all out. One of my favorite parts, I have a little bit of honey from Peaceful Valley. I'm gonna do just a couple drizzles around. A little bit of honey in this dish is gonna really, really bolster all of that acidity and give it a really awesome counterbalance. It'll blend well with the pork, duck, cranberries, kale, onion, garlic, chili flake, and of course, 
butter.